So following on from our catastrophic experience earlier in the week, doing a deep dive into this new Mac Mini to try and discover why we were having such awful results when everyone else seemed to be raving about the machine has led to some interesting discoveries. I was particularly interested in trying Final Cut Pro on this, certainly after Mark got such spectacular results in Audio Land with Logic Pro, Apple's own native digital audio workstation yesterday. Link in the description below if you haven't seen that already, definitely check it out. Firstly, let's just cast our minds back to two days ago when I released a scathing review of the new M1, basically saying it's incapable of editing video in any real professional capacity, particularly if you edit on a 4K timeline. We'd seen other YouTubers posting videos with spectacular results, even on the base model, and we wanted to try it for ourselves. In a potentially short-sighted investigation, I tried editing video in DaVinci Resolve on a 4K timeline using our 6K Blackmagic camera's RAW files. I didn't have much luck. I was getting between one to five frames a second at the best of times, and the 22 second video took a whopping nine minutes and 40 seconds to render out in 4K. So I've had the chance to dig a little deeper into its alternative capabilities, and we seem to have found the issue, for us at least. For a quick bit of background info, here at Present Day Production, we do a lot of commercial filming and editing. We record our videos in Blackmagic 6K RAW and 4.5K Redcode RAW because it enables fantastic color grading capabilities during post-production and also allows for reframing of shots, zooms, and gives many other advantages that other non-RAW formats wouldn't permit. For example, if you mess up the white balance or you get the wrong ISO or exposure on a shot, or you want to change those for creative reasons, you can do that. So that being the format we use daily, even in our YouTube video production, I thought that would be the best place to start. That's my usual workflow, and if this really is the Intel AMD killer others are claiming it to be, I want to be able to maintain that workflow. I was immensely disappointed at first seeing such a slow performance from a computer that has been so massively hyped by so many other video producers. However, not wanting to write it off completely, I went on to try some other formats, resolutions and more, and here's what I found. I was massively disappointed with the Blackmagic RAW performance, but this computer doesn't have a dedicated GPU and it's limited to integrated graphics for that very reason, and Resolve uses the GPU heavily in its processing. This is one reason we experienced such a bad result, but not the only one. Some of our viewers leaving comments on the last video were claiming I either didn't download the 17.1 version specifically optimized for the M1, which you can see me downloading in the video, or that I was using the free version, which doesn't allow for GPU acceleration and various other features. This was incorrect. Uh, I do have two studio licenses for DaVinci Resolve, so the full and correct version was installed on the Mac Mini. I believe the confusion may have come from the screenshot that was placed in the video, which appeared to show the free version being clicked on. But just to clarify, yes, it is a full version of Resolve, and yes, it was the correct version for these new M1 Macs. So what's the issue? Many people in the comments suggested we try Final Cut Pro as this really is optimized for these new Macs and so we downloaded it. We also wanted to compare RAW with Apple ProRes so we shot the following short sequence twice. Once in Blackmagic RAW with the compression turned up to the maximum 12 to 1 and then we repeated the same shots at least as closely as we could replicate them with the Blackmagic camera recording to Apple ProRes 422 so as we could compare the performance straight out of the camera. The difference in size was negligible. The raw file was 9.1 gigabytes and the ProRes was 8.5 gigs, so certainly not enough of a difference for me to switch from raw to ProRes in my usual workflow with my regular editing PC. So how did the Mac Mini perform running Final Cut Pro with ProRes as so many people in the comments recommended? Oh my god, this computer loves ProRes. 4K ProRes 422 ran without a single frame drop and I could easily flick back and forth on a 4K timeline in Final Cut, even on color graded footage. You can even color in real time. You can tweak any parameter and it just changes in front of you while playing without dropping any frames. Astounding. 
I can do this on the editing PC I usually use for my video production, but I certainly wasn't expecting to be able to do it in real time on a Mac mini with integrated graphics and only eight gigabytes of RAM. So what was causing such an abysmal result earlier in the week? A nine gigabyte file versus 8.5 certainly isn't gonna give any modern computer sleepless nights. So the issue must be with DaVinci Resolve, right? Maybe even the M1 optimized version just doesn't work very well without a dedicated GPU and at least 16 gigs of RAM. But you can't have a dedicated GPU with these new machines. The architecture doesn't work like that. Have Blackmagic Design released a cut and shunt version of Resolve when they should have just said Resolve won't work on an Apple Silicon Mac yet, so don't bother trying. Well, no, because look at the 4K timeline in Resolve when using the ProRes 422 file. As with Final Cut, it's handling like a hot knife through butter. So is RAW the culprit? Upon dropping ProRes into Resolve on the M1, it flew through it just as smoothly as on Final Cut. So yes, the issue for what I was doing at least seems to be RAW. Resolve does work on this Mac. You just need to be feeding it something it likes format wise. Try and edit in Blackmagic RAW and you are screwed and Final Cut won't even let you import it. With ProRes coming straight off of our Blackmagic, it's a dream. But of course, we wouldn't be able to use our RED camera with this platform at the moment, as that only records to RED code RAW and there are no other options. So it looks like the format you record in is critical. If I want to edit professional resolution video on this machine, I need to be recording to Apple ProRes, made by Apple for an Apple computer, and I'll be good to go. If I want or need to maintain my usual raw workflow, then it just won't work, at least currently on these machines, and it's nothing to do with file size. Bizarrely, rendering a Blackmagic 6K raw clip on Resolve took 9 minutes 40 seconds in our initial test, but the much better performing ProRes took much, much longer to render to a 4K H.264 MOV file. It seems that the initial performance boost from ProRes is slightly lost when doing a final output. In both Final Cut and Resolve, the render started quickly at around 25 frames a second, then dropped to one frame a second, with Resolve taking 10 minutes, eight seconds to render and Final Cut taking 20 minutes exactly to export a 24 second video. It's very, very interesting that we were able to get real-time editing with no frame drops, truly astounding performance, particularly in the coloring area, whereas the export really took its time. Perhaps this could be due to the low RAM of this base model Mac. Although it's not a huge deal, you could always go for a cheeky wee and a coffee while you wait. So how have I revised my thoughts on this little monkey? I'm now firmly with the opinion of others who have been raving about this all week. Work with a video format it likes and the performance is insane. Paying 699 quid for a computer that performs as well as this is mind blowing. And I don't think I've seen anything like this before. If you're able to record in H.264, 265 or ProRes, you're in luck. This is a great computer for the money. I won't be switching to it simply because I personally prefer the workflow of Resolve and Blackmagic RAW, but for a lot of content producers, this really is revolutionary. Many well-respected folk in the industry have commented on how this changes how performance is measured. Bench tests, RAM, processor speeds, all of those are far less relevant than ever before, and I'm now inclined to agree with them. My initial bitter disappointment in this machine has turned into the awe that Mark experienced in yesterday's audio tests. And whilst it might be early days, certainly way too early for anyone to jump ship just yet, the future for the new Apple Silicon architecture looks very bright indeed, and Intel and AMD have a hefty challenge ahead of them. So thank you for watching. Please leave any comments you may have in the comments section below. Please give us a thumbs up to counteract the epic amount of thumbs down our Wednesday video created. And please subscribe and ding the ding dong. It really does help us to grow the channel and that's something we really want to do over the winter. We have some huge plans for future videos. Thanks again and we'll see you in the next one.